Hello, my dear viewers. Today we will think about empathy, the ability to sense other people's emotions. Empathy seems to have deep roots in our brains and bodies and in our evolutionary history. But empathy is like a Russian doll, with at its core the ancient tendency to match another's emotional state. Around this core, evolution has built ever more sophisticated capacities, such as feeling concern for others and adapting their viewpoint. Empathy works better in small social groups, where everyone knows one another than in large, anonymous societies. Empathy for other people is one commodity the world most needs more of. We need to learn how to balance individual and collective interest in our current complex societies. One of the tools we can use to help with this is to foster our inborn capacity for empathy. The human species also has a dark side. There are individuals called psychopaths in which the brain has been wired wrong. These individuals are good at perspective taking and those are good at manipulating others but lack empathy. Two similar views arose during English Industrial Revolution. An economic view that our purpose is to consume and produce and a biological view that our purpose is to survive and reproduce. Both views imply that competition is good. The vast body of knowledge that has accumulated in anthropology, psychology, biology and neuroscience demonstrates that there are two sides to human nature. We are social animals, highly cooperative and usual peace-loving. But we are also selfish animals, focused on state status, resources and territory. Humans are easily swayed in one emotional direction or another by those around us. We are laughing together, we are crying together, we are yawing together, we like synchrony. Why would empathy evolve? What might have come first is emotional contagion. When emotional contagion evolved into empathy, it carried both selfish and unselfish motivations. An example of self-protective altruism would be a person who hears another person scream, goes into hiding and as a result saves itself from a predator. Another example would be a primate who stops activities that are causing pain to another because this action eliminates uncomfortable feelings associated with watching another suffer. May we not be able to create a new human, but we are remarkably good at modifying the old one? What do you think?